Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to have a haul video because I just got back from the Heirloom Productions stamp show where I was teaching this weekend and um, I apologize, my voice is going to sound a little husky because I just gapped all weekend with my friends and also I had to kind of yell when I talked because it was such a big crowd. But um, I had a lot of fun and I'm going to share what I picked up at the show. Uh, please keep in mind that um, I run my YouTube channel professionally. I do tutorials. Um, um, about four times a week and I teach so I do end up needing quite a few supplies please don't feel like you have to have these supplies and I'm putting this disclaimer out there because I just want to make sure you know it's a haul video and if you don't like haul videos then you're probably not gonna like this one so I just want to put that out there because someone just left a really <laughs> actually I laughed it was funny a comment on a haul video the other day saying I didn't learn anything in this <laughs> and I wasted 20 minutes of my life and I'm like it's a haul video not a tutorial so if you learn anything here today it's purely coincidental this is a haul video um, so I arrived uh, we arrived Thursday night and we took a make and take class it was a lot of fun and um, then Friday morning we arrived and I had a little bit of time before my first class and I stopped in on the stamp on it booth and I picked up some embossing tinsel and what that is is an embossing powder that has glitter in it and I've been using that a lot lately I only have a couple colors I have um I have red, green, and gold. I might have a silver and a black, but I'm not sure. But those colors I use quite a bit. And so I thought it'd be fun to have some kind of non-holiday colors. So I picked up, um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six of those. And then one just ultra fine glitter that you're supposed to be able to burnish really smooth and color on top of. So I wanted to try that technique, but I've always colored underneath. I have done some coloring on top, but it's always been a little rough. But this is supposed to be able to be burnished smooth. And they had a deal where you could fill one of these containers with all the little pots of glitter for ten dollars so I thought that'd be fun because those are products I do use quite a bit um, the next thing I got and not in in no particular order well actually I will go in particular order so the next booth I went to actually the first booth I went to was impression obsession because there was this la layering macaroon set that I really wanted and I tried ordering it online from one of their um, their official sellers but they made a mistake when they listed it and I got just one sentiment from the set so um, so I'm like no I want the whole set and they didn't have it in stock so I thought well I'll just get it from the stamp I'll get it right from Impression Obsession when I go to the stamp show, but they didn't have it either. Their booth was jam-packed all weekend, but I did get in and I started looking around and um, I found a few sets that I really liked. I never saw these before. These are designed by Julie Faithen Balzer, who's a very talented mixed media artist. You probably know who she is um, on YouTube. And uh, I just thought these were beautiful and they'd be really fun and really bold to go on top of my some of my jelly printed backgrounds because I have a lot of backgrounds that I haven't done anything with and I feel kind of bad that I spent the time making them and haven't used them so I thought these would be really fun to use on them and make cards with them because I don't work in my art journal very much I do I tend to do more sketchbook work than art journal work so I thought these would actually go in cards really nicely so I grabbed these and they were on clearance they were eight dollars each and I thought that was kind of nice a good good size set and the impression obsession stamps are the higher quality polymer and not the silicone so I assume these are as well um, so I tried those and I also got these for anniversary and Valentine's cards I thought they were really um, really cute and they were you know, five dollars on sale so that was kind of fun nice little nice little bargain um, bargain that I'll use because it's not a bargain if you don't use it and I, we had that conversation in some of the booths going should I get this one it's like sixteen dollars but this is only five and it's like well if you get the $16 one and you use it three times, it's a better deal than getting the $5 one and never using it. So, you know, it's only a bargain if you use it. So um, I went to Rubbernecker Stamps. They have all these watercolor floral stamps that I love, and I have quite a few already. And I saw these flamingos. And um, the way you do these is you can ink them up with your markers or your ink pads. There's plenty of room to get the multicolor inking on there. But then you've got the stamps to layer on for the legs and for the beaks. And this is a really cute stamp set um, that I I want to make some cards with and I thought it would be fun to also do a tutorial on this because uh, lining up the beaks and the legs can be a little tricky and I have a technique for lining them up you don't have to have an expensive misty or anything for this in fact um, it works better with I have a DIY solution and an actual store-bought solution that I'll share with you when I do this card but I thought it was really sweet and I love tropical stuff so 
I grabbed that, and uh, while I was there, the owner of Rubbernecker asked me if I would like to play with the Versafine Claire inks, because they just started using them, and they want some ideas for demoing and whatnot, and so they very generously sent me home with a set, and um, it's nice if you are trying out, or especially if you're going to review a set, to have um, more options just so you can really test it out and, you know, see really what it's good for, and um, kind of see all the versatility that it has, so I've never used these before. Apparently, they're a water-based... No, they're a pigment ink that you can use with your watercolors and watercolor markers without them smearing, but you can also emboss with them because they're slow drying enough. Um, I've always loved my VersaFine and VersaColor ink pads, so I'm hoping that I like these as much, but I've never tried them and I'm looking forward to that. So that was um, that was provided to me um, for free, so I, don't, I just want to be honest with you guys, uh, as always. <laughs> Because, you know, I mean, that's a very extravagant amount of ink pads. Um, not that I need to make an excuse for, for what I do choose to buy or or get, but I just wanted to let you know. So, um, they had a, the Elizabeth Craft brand was there. Uh, they had a whole booth, and I had never really seen their products before, but I had heard about them. Um, and I'm generally not a die cut person. Like, I generally don't get dyes to match my stamps unless I know that it would be difficult to cut on my skin and cut, or I need to cut it out a bazillion times, like for Christmas cards. or Like, I do have some dyes to match my Christmas stamps, because you're making a lot of cards at once. Um, but I really thought, I don't... I don't have a lot of embellishments and I seem to use up what I have very quickly. So like some, one of the things I wanted to find was some different things I could use for embellishments. And I really thought these flower dies were pretty. And I think that you could have them flat enough to go on a card, but I also think they'd be pretty for some home decor stuff. And I like to do my mantle in different seasons. And I thought it'd be fun to maybe recycle some bottles and, um, and make some paper flowers for them. So they had a deal where it was by, um, by, three, get the fourth free. And so um, that's what I did with these. These were all in the kind of 12 to $15 range. I just thought they were really pretty and unique. And they, and the nice thing is you had a, I, I was seeing that like there was a bunch of different similar shapes that I could put together to make different things. Like this looks kind of like a lilac leaf. It's a little more serrated, but I have a little punch that I could do all the little blossoms for. So when I looked at the dies and what they were making, I looked on the back to see what size the dies were. And if I had punches or if some of the dies were very similar between the sets, I just, I went that way so I'd get a good versatility. And that book Gonia, I thought could be a carnation and could be, you know, just have different versatilities for it um, or different ways to use it. My voice is very tired and I think my brain is working on super slow speed today. <laughs> uh, so I thought those were beautiful. When I went to pay, I think it was this one rang up at $5 and I was like, oh, well, let me go grab another one of the more expensive ones as my free one and pay for the $5 one. So yeah, I, I, I felt that they're, they're the prices were pretty good. The regular prices were nice, and I thought you got a lot of versatility on each set. So I'm looking forward to doing some flower tutorials with these. I think, um, I think I'm really going to enjoy just even just playing with these, even if I don't do a tutorial on them, just playing with them. So if you want a tutorial, let me know. If you think, yeah, Lindsay, it's a die. You cut it out, you put it together, big whoop. If you think it's no big deal, you don't need a tutorial. You can let me know that too. That's fine. I won't be offended. Um, so one of the one of the first um, booths I went into Saturday because I got to look in the stamp on it booth and impression obsession and. Then I had to skedaddle my buns over to my classroom and or my class area and get ready to teach because I had uh, two very pretty large classes to teach that day uh, on Friday and when we went to shop Saturday I came into this it was called Double Trouble Scrapbooking was the name of the shop um, and these are by Stacy Stamps but I saw these and I'm like you know they're simple but I really like them so I was thinking about it and I was like I can mask these off it reminds me of like the graphic uh, Mondrian paintings that were so popular um, in the 80s, I think it was the 80s, um, excuse me, I'm not like, I'm not all, I'm not really up on art history too much, I, I've forgotten a lot, but I thought it'd be cool to um, do it in bold colors like that, or you could do stained glass with it, or you could do peg stamping in the little, the little sections, I just thought there was a lot of options for this, and this one I was thinking it would be fun just to doodle in, um, and use as a background for like a mermaid card, or a nautical card, or something, but I was gonna wait, because I wasn't sure what else I was gonna see, because that was the first booth I went into, and so I was wandering along, and uh, my friend Kathy came up behind me, she's like, happy birthday! So so she got me these for my birthday a little early and it was very sweet of her so those are going to be fun to play with it was very kind of her to you know to pick those up for me because I, I i want to think about it and i'll come back probably come back but i want to think about it 
Um, something I've always enjoyed are these Faber Castell. Oh my gosh, that's 13 stencils. I thought there were 10. Um, I have a few of these sets, like three, I think, of these six by six sets. And I did get one of the 12 by 12 sets. And these are cardboard stencils. So they're not plastic, but you get, um, well, this is 13, but it's like, you know, 10, I think it's probably 10 sheets, maybe. I don't know. Um, they've always been 10, 10 sheets and they're cardboard. However, I use them on my jelly plate. And so, you know, after you've done a couple prints with them, they are coated with your acrylic paint, or you can just brayer on some Mod Podge on your plate and you can just press it in, brayer on Mod Podge to the other side and end up with a nice coated, um, stencil. My kids love using these. They're super fun and very inexpensive when you figure you're getting like 10, well this one's 13 stencils for like six bucks. So, or seven dollars, six or seven. I don't know what they're up to now. They used to be six. Now they're six ninety-five. So, but I had a two dollar off coupon for this booth. So I actually paid six for each of these. Um, so, you know, they're, they're really, they're really nice. And since I use them with acrylic paint on my jelly plate, they're perfect. If you're going to use like spray inks on it, you would just maybe dab them with like a uh, a damp cloth or something because otherwise that ink could travel to your next one but it's if it's the first time you use it it's going to absorb into the stencil so you know just want to let you know these are cardboard but i still think they're a wonderful buy and look how i mean look how good well cut they are um you know you know it seems like you set up to poke the the holes out of them but i guess you don't have to anymore and i got this one here it's got um this one has more like shapes i'd be probably more inclined to like stamp through them like you need to see this you're probably like get on with it Lindsay. <laughs> there's a gear you can click on the bottom of the video and you can fast forward me you can make me go faster or you can slow me down whichever whichever works if you put me down at half speed i sound like i'm drunk if you speed me up then i sound like a deranged chipmunk so you can <laughs> you can choose what's best for you so like you can use those for tracing if you want i think it'd be kind of a fun background you know some of these i think would just be really fun to you know to trace or to kind of stencil and build your backgrounds that way but i just thought these would be kind of nice too i'll probably throw those in my travel bag um maybe take the backgrounds and use them throw them in my jelly print stencil bin but um i just thought they were a lot of fun like these would be fun to trace and and use on your cards i'm not like i said i'm not I, i'm not that huge on dyes so a lot of the stuff i either do with my electronic cutter or i um you know like with a lot of stamping i just layer up on my on my my cards i don't die cut out that much so and, and if i do then i'm die cutting it on my skin and cut. So when I was in the Marcos paper booth where I got those packages of stencils, they had other ones too. Like if you did, um, like if you did more planner stuff or Bible journaling and stuff like that, they had ones that were geared to that. Um, so there, they have quite a few of those sets out now. So this interesting print was pulled by Sally Lynn McDonald. And I do believe she has a YouTube channel. She's very active on Facebook and she has a lot of tutorials using the gel press printing, printing plate, which is like your jelly arts printing plate. And, um, this is alcohol ink on the, um, the jelly printing plate, the gel press printing, printing plate. And it was really fun to see her do this. And that's a technique I'm going to try, you know, probably today, probably today. I'm resting. I'm going to rest my voice, probably throw in some TV to binge watch and, and play with this technique. But, um, I will try to find her. If she has a YouTube tutorial, I'm going to link to it down below. And if not, I'm going to link to her Facebook page so you can see her in action. But, um, she's, she's super talented with these, with these jelly plates. And I, she let me take this home and I'm glad. So I don't forget that I want to do this and hopefully I'll remember exactly how she did it. If not, I'm going to, I'll probably visit her video too. Um, Another thing I bought, it wasn't stamping per se, but, um, but I saw this and you know, the only, it's so funny, the things I went to the show saying, I got, I want to get this, this, and this, there were three things. There were the impression obsession, layering macaroon. Can you even imagine how beautiful layering macaroon set? Mm, love macaroons. Uh, actually I've never eaten one, but I love the way they look. I love the, I love like cupcakes and things like that. And anyway, so picture, if you will, this gorgeous stamp set that I could not find. And I also wanted to get a couple of the new Tim Holtz embossing folders. The one that looks like, like sheet metal, like kind of riveted on top of each other. It's one of those 3D ones. And he also has one that's flourishes. That's almost like a Rococo uh, relief flourish. So I wanted those two. Could not find them. I think they were sold out because I didn't get a chance to shop on Saturday because I, I'm on Friday because I was teaching. Um, so I kind of came out empty handed with the things I was going for, but I had a lot of surprises along the way. And this was one of them. This 
this was from Tesla, uh, which is generally a dye, uh, an outfit that sells um, dyes. And but this is a um, a little kit to make little like photo charms, or you could do collage charms. But it came with 20 bales, and if you've ever bought jewelry bales, they can be hard to find, and they're quite pricey. So and they often will go for over a dollar a piece, like the glue on bales. So there's 20 of those. There's 20 tiles. There's 10 rectangles and 10 squares, and they're super clear. So they're nicer quality, not quite as thick as like the flat marbles you can get in like the uh, floral department. So I thought these would be really fun. And uh, of course a little lighter because they're not as thick. And then it comes with a glue. And I'll tell you what, whenever I'm buying something that's like a clearance product, after I bought it, I actually went and sat on a bench and I opened it up to make sure that the glue was still gluey. <laughs> because I didn't want to go home with dried glue because I knew I saw they had like individual bottles of this too. So I did check that out, but it was fine. And um, I'm looking forward to this because I like to do resin projects, but I live in an area that's very humid and quite chilly. And I find that I have a hard time carrying my resin unless it's um it's dry and warm so like September is about the about the best time for me to do resin projects and also I have a bunch of dried flowers that I wanted to do in resin but then you have to seal them with like Mod Podge and let them dry and then you and it's a big ordeal and this is going to be easier and faster and um, I'm going to experiment with this idea and the other thing is there's 20 of these so I have enough that I can play around and experiment get my technique perfected before I do a tutorial on it so I don't have to be stingy I can just go for it and figure out what's going to work the best before I share that information with you. I try to do that anyway. Um, so if it was just a kit of three, even if it was only three dollars, I probably would have passed on it because by the time I got good at it, I'd be all out of supplies and I wouldn't be able to show you guys. So um, so this was definitely picked up to do a tutorial. Plus I have a craft fair that I'm going to do this summer and um, having 20 of something is great because you know you can you can batch them up and sell them. Um, okay, so next up, oh, I, I forgot, I got something else, an impression obsession, even though I said I am never buying another grab bag, because I always get burned on grab bags, but sometimes they're just so fun, and this was five dollars, it was a, a takeout box full of um, stamps, and you know what? I would use about half of them, at least, at least half of them. There's some really lovely sentiments in here that would be for, um, well, it's going to be, I can't really, it's kind of tricky because they're they're just the red rubber, they're unmounted, so um, so they're not, I you know, I don't think you could really see them. Red is a tough color to, um, to video anyway, but like, um, uh, I think that you are quite wonderful is one of the sentiments, and um, scatter sunshine all about your way, all along your way, and um, I'm sorry for the things I said when it was winter, which is me, I do not like the cold. <laughs> And you know, there's just some lovely friendship sentiments, and I like, um, I like sentiments like that because I can always use them because I make more cards than I have opportunities to send them. Or you made my day. I love that one. You made my day. It's so sweet. Um, uh, celebrate the simple pl pleasures in life, and just uh, you know, teacups. I love teacups and coffee cups and teapots. And you know, I really made out well on this set. Cute little cat looks like it's batting at something. This would be cute to put under a Christmas tree, like the kitty cat is batting or batting at an ornament on the tree. And there was an ornament with a tr with a bow, like an evergreen bow, and a little sandpiper and a lighthouse. And you know, there this was just a really lovely assortment. Um, and a couple coffee cups. One says happy. One says friends. So I mean, I really I feel like I made out with this. Um, you know, that doesn't sound right. I made out on this deal, and uh, for five dollars, yeah, I would buy another one. And I figured, even if I'm looking through, even if it's a, if it's a, sometimes you get like a real bummer. But if we open this up, and we're all sitting in the hotel breakfast nook, and I figured, even if these are awful, we'll get five dollars worth of laughs out of it. But it actually was a really good, uh, really good kit. Now we all have our favorites. Anytime you go to a stamp show, you're gonna have di just different, because there's so many different kinds of stamps there and so many different companies that everyone's gonna have a different favorite and you can find something that suits you, which is really nice. And one of my favorites has always been Lost Coast Designs. Um, so I grabbed a few things there. I do have a lot of their stamps already. So I grabbed a few things that I didn't have. Um, Mini Flying Ladies. They have a chess, um, like this funky chess set that I've used before to make some really funky bookmarks. And I'm trying to think, I think I did a video on it. I definitely showed it on my blog. And I made a bunch of these when I was watching like Once Upon a Time, that TV show with my kids. We were watching it, we were binge watching it on Netflix. And um, it, you know, it was just perfect to like be playing with these these stamp set, these, th that stamp set. And then they had these mini flying ladies, which I thought had that same feel to them. Um, she, Linda does a lot of these really funky collage pieces in her rubber stamps. And they're just, they're just gorgeous. I, really like them. And I've hemmed and hawed over this set before because um, 
because I'm like, what am I going to do with them? You know, I like it, but what am I going to do with them? And I thought this would be a great excuse to make some artist trading cards. And I've, it's something I enjoy doing, but it's like, oh, that's not very practical. But then if you are going to a show like this, you can make them and hand them out to people you meet or trade them. Um, and plus they're just fun to make. And, you know, I like to just unwind and do some just fun stamping projects sometimes. So I got these and this is Lost Coast Designs. And um, anytime I, I have a, I have discount codes for some of these companies. I'm going to list, put links to everything that I showed you in the video description. And if I have a coupon code, I'm going to share that as well, um, because some of the companies have been nice enough to give me discount codes over the years. So I'm like been emailing them and making sure they still work. Um, but yeah, this is Lost Coast Designs. And then um, this one, this I thought was quite funny. Um, I have a couple friends that are having a rough time in the love department. And um, this is, it's hard to see, but this is like the American Gothic couple, but she's kind of collaged them and made it all steampunky. Um, and, it's, and I got the sentiment that says, love is like a deck of cards. It starts with a diamond and a heart and ends with a club and a spade. And I thought that was, I thought that was funny. And uh, one of my friends who was having a, a and trouble in that apartment. She's like, if you sent me that card, I would absolutely die. It would be so funny. I would love it. So, um, so I got that and I got this one here because this is basically me. I don't rise and shine. I caffeinate and hope for the best, which I have so many coffee themed products and I thought that would be really, really cute to use with that. This is a really smug looking cat and just how it's tall and skinny. I thought it would be really uh, nice on a bookmark and I like making bookmarks. I like to laminate things. Truth be told, I really love to laminate things. And I don't know why, but putting it through the laminator, seeing it come out all shiny and glossy, it's cheap fun, cheap thrills. I love to laminate. So any excuse, I, I'm going to laminate my ATCs because I don't know, tiny little laminated things are so cute. I love them. And then this I thought was just lovely. It's a Southwestern stamp, um, again, by Lost Coast Designs. It's a like a, a steer head and it has dream catchers. And I just thought it was really lovely and would be really pretty to do with watercolor. Maybe stamp it um, in clear ink and clear embossed it and then watercolor it I think it would just be really quite lovely on some card fronts so um, I'm not I don't make the most elaborate cards I um, I enjoy card making I know I'm not the most modern card maker um, but I just I the certain techniques I like and the certain products I like so I just like to use what I like I guess um, Oh my goodness. So I saw my friend Lorraine. You guys probably remember Lorraine and Kathy from Ask a Crafter. So I went to the show with Kathy. Kathy helped me out in my classes and we ran into Lorraine and Lorraine spotted this stamp and I just, oh my gosh, I have to have it. It says, I'm your friend because you deserve the very best. And can't you see Lorraine sending this card out to people? Um, I thought it was so cute and I totally, I think that'd be perfect on um, on just a just because card because, you know, you only have one birthday a year, but you know, it's fun to send unbirthday cards. Uh, so I got that. And then I thought this goldfish was just, they have a lot of nautical stamps. So it was kind of hard to hold myself back, but I have a lot already. So I'm trying to be really um, kind of curate my collection a little bit more and not just get everything I love. Um, but I thought this would be really nice with the smaller Hero Arts goldfish, goldfish layering stamps I have. But since the, the their detail on their stamps are really good, I have um, I have a seahorse of theirs and it's just the details immaculate. But the way that you've got the stippling here, I think it's going to look like a layered stamp when I stamp it. So when I stamp it with the Hero Arts layering fish, I think that they're going to look really similar. I mean, they're going to look like they belong together and not like they're complete um, oddballs. So I grabbed that. Um, so yeah, <laughs> so I do, I, I have a lot more reason behind what I get. I actually have always had reasons behind what I bought, even though I used to completely overbuy. Um, and this is from Local King Rubber Stamp. Holy moly, they were like sold out of everything. And it made me so happy because I love Local King Rubber Stamps. Um, they always have great deal deals in their booth and the demonstrator is just so sweet and I don't think she would ever have a secret that she wouldn't tell you as far as like rubber stamping and how to get the most out of your stamps. Her designs are, are high quality, beautiful, um, just wonderful. And, and honestly, you probably, you don't see me use these stamps as much as I use them because often it's like, I need a quick card and I grab them and I make a quick card as I'm running out the door uh, because they're so easy to use. And um, 
I got this one there. There's another set that was super cute called Foxes, and she's going to send me that one in the mail because they were all sold out, but uh, she's a favorite. I always make sure it's one of the first booths I go to because I'm pretty sure I'm going to drop. <laughs> you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end up with like, you know, four or five sets. It, what's the deal? The deal is buy four and get the fifth free, then I will be walking out of there with five stamps. <laughs> or, you know, because it's just that's, that's always a favorite. They're, they're so good, and you want to go before they sell out, but I couldn't get there on, on Friday. It was Saturday, and um, what else? Oh, and I do want to let you know that uh, when I was in there, Lisa gave me this set, stamp set. I just want to be completely honest with you there. Um, and so when we were at the... Oh, wait, I still have a couple things from the show. Uh, oh, yeah, I got a quick couple more things. Um, so at the Close to My Heart booth, this is Denise Sanders' booth, and it was so cute because when we were in there, she just got ner uh, news that she has a... Her first granddaughter was born. Um, she's had some grandsons, but it was her first granddaughter, so that was really exciting. And um, I have a thing for Mason Jars, and I kept, we kept joking, like, oh, look at Mason Jar, you know, because, you know, we're all... All of us are crazy about Mason Jars in the group that we went with. With. and um I just couldn't resist this one. Um, I did resist quite a few mason jars, and I saw this one, and I just love the long striped straw and the slices of fruit and the, the the fonts, and it was $12. I just couldn't pass it up, and then Denise gave me the stamp. It says, leave a little sparkle wherever you go. She said, see, you leave a little sparkle, Lindsay, so take that. <laughs> that was very kind, um, and uh, this is a little, little abstract because it's not from the stamp show but we were getting together to craft and one of the women that we met um she had brought some stuff that she had doubles of to sell like she had ordered one and then bought one before it came in for us she ordered it i guess and i would wanted this die in a thick die so i could cut mat board scraps with it um but i think it's discontinued now and i've always wanted it but my friend kathy had it so i know i could always borrow it from her but she was selling it for 10 bucks and i said yeah i'll definitely buy it from you because um that's what i've wanted and i could see myself using that a lot there's been many times i've wished i had it um and uh, so that wasn't technically from the stamp show, but it was from it was from the weekend anyway. Uh, and so these are from I think these are the last stamps I have to show you. These are from Technique Junkies, and I will have a coupon code below for they for these. Um, and again, I was trying to find some stuff that was going to make me use my jelly prints more more often because I make the prints and I have a stack of prints and I don't know what to do with them. So I got some big backgrounds that I think would be really pretty, just stamped on top of a jelly print background and mounted on a card. And um, because all this work is done, all the collage done, I think that, and I also think it's simple enough because of all the white space that you'll be able to see the quality of the prints. But if the print isn't, is like a little, it's just textury or it's not strong enough to be the focal point, but it's a nice background. I'll be stamping these types of stamps over them. Um, and I just, I thought that would also be nice to stamp and then uh, go over with watercolor pencils and then just like in a, like a blending a blending marker and just kind of spread it out a little bit just so it's got a like a vintage photo tint to it um same with that i mean i think this one would be pretty on a jelly print as well um this there's i just really like this i was kind of like i don't know what it is about this but i just really like it and it's i think it's kind of funny because it was a stampin up set called like bar cart that i had I, I had ordered it, but unfortunately, I mixed up the numbers when I put my order in, and I got something else, and it was completely my fault, so I didn't return it because it was my fault, um, but it was very similar to this, and I just love these vintage mugs, the vintage-looking mugs, so I might use it with some of my coffee stamps, or I might actually stamp it and then scan and cut it out, all these little cups out, and maybe put them on bookmarks or ATCs, because apparently I need to work tiny now. I'm in I'm in this, like, tiny stamping mood. I don't know. You get those. You just get in these moods. And I did a little uh, class with Pat from Technique Junkies, and um, it was so funny. I really loved using the stamp. And then she had a sample in her booth where she did flocking on the tutu. And I'm telling you what, I went like, I bought a whole set of flocking when it was really popular, and I've only used probably the yellow and the white and the brown. So I, this would really, I could make all kinds of fluffy buns, fluffy butts, fluffy tutu butts would be really cute, I think, with my flocking. So I just, and I have Wizard of Oz stamps, and I thought any Wizard of Oz type of quote would look really cute with that, and I love Wizard of Oz, so I thought that would be fun. I just really like that. It looks kind of like, it, it has kind of an Asian feel to it, and um, I, I like making friendship cards. I think for one thing that um, most, of my, most of my friends that are female also stamp and craft, and they really love getting handmade cards, um, so 
why not? Let's make some more handmade cards. And I'm not really selling that that much. I mean, I do have a craft fair coming up, but for the most part, I make more than I could possibly ever sell. So, um, so yeah, that'd be kind of fun. And I always wanted a nice clean rubber stamp of a library card. Um, so I grabbed that one and this, oh my gosh, I just love this. It's like the John, it's like silly walks. It's like John Cleese silly walks. <laughs> What's all this then? I thought that was so cute that, um, I couldn't resist it. And, um, so yeah, I got that. And then last but certainly not least, I visited one of my favorite, oh, I know I have two. So I will keep that for last. So this I got, like I mentioned, I was on an embell embellishment um, hunting mission. Uh, I like to use buttons. This is by a company that you probably have at Joann's, if you have a Joann's store. A lot of big box carry the Dress It Up Jesse James um, company. I've never seen these before. Usually they sell buttons and beads, but these are like little cookie cutters. And, um, you know, when you're making a lot of Christmas cards, it's nice to have just a little embellishment on them. Or if you're making ornaments or something like that, these might be a little thick for cards, but maybe for ornaments. I thought that was really sweet. Or even on a scrapbook page. I mean, they are a little thick, but I tend to have lumpy scrapbook pages. And I am such a goober that I don't take that many photos at Christmas. I always forget because I'm too in the moment. Um, so, you know, I'm lucky if I get one page one enough pictures for one page on Christmas so you know I can afford to have it a little thick you know because it's not like I have 10 pages I need to fit in my album so I got those and I also really like the flat wooden embellishments and they had some nautical ones but I already had some that I that were similar and that I like the ones that I already had more um but I did like these little Christmas ones because uh, I don't have a lot of Christmas embellishments and I tend to make a lot of Christmas cards. So I thought this would be really handy for those cards. And even if like, like some of these I like more than other, I, I like the more graphic outlining ones without a lot of detail the most. But when you're sending out a lot of cards, you know, you definitely would go through the other ones. So I grabbed that. These were from Gary Berlin. They were in the center area where they had kind of the bargain stuff. Um, that's all I got from him. I usually do get a few more things from him, but um, you know, I think doing the KonMari declutter last year really made me aware of how much abundance I had. And granted, this is a lot of stuff that I'm picking up and I don't want to say that that it isn't. It totally is. And if it, this wasn't my business, I really wouldn't be able to justify this many purchases personally. And I'm not judging anybody else. They, a lot of people bought a heck of a lot more than I did. A lot of people bought less than I did. I'm not like, not trying to compare or anything, but I'm just, you know, saying that, you know, I use, I use a lot of this stuff. So, so that's why I got what I did. Um, one of my favorite shops, or I would say probably the shop at the heirloom show that I use most of what I buy from, like, I mean, out of what I buy, I use the highest percentage of little goes to waste would be Islet Outlet. This company has been around a long time. They do have a website. Um, some of these products probably won't be on their website because I did get some from the dollar bin, so they may be discontinued. Um, but I really like their brads. I tend to embellish a lot with brads. A lot of people say it's old fashioned and fuddy duddy, but I don't care because I like it. And um, I just, I really like the detail in their, in their brads and their eyelets. So I got these cherries because I thought they'd be pretty on vintage cards. And I do a lot of kind of not so much vintage old fashioned looking, but more like fifties, mid century, modern vintage. Like, you know, I have like, I don't know. I like, I like fashion from the fifties and, you know, appliances from the fifties and coffee mugs from the fifties. I like that kind of 1950s vibe. I thought these would go good on that. Um, I also have a couple sock monkey stamp sets. So whenever I see sock monkey embellishments or brads, I grab them. So, um, they'll have them for a card. These were in the half price bin. I think those were two. So these were like a dollar 50. So regular price on their brads are like three bucks and you get quite a few on there. And then I got it. These were in the, you know, bargain, the bargain bin. But again, Christmas, um, Christmas trees, because you make so many Christmas cards. They're nice and flat. They'll mail. They don't cost more to mail. Um, I got the pastel birds. So I thought they'd be pretty with the tree stamps that I designed for rubber stamp tapestry. Um, flying dragons, because I got a really cute stamp set from Stampin' Up. And I do have a whole binder full of fantasy images. Uh, but I got a, a set from Stampin' Up. It's a magical, shoot, magical something. I can't remember what it's called. I've used it on my YouTube channel and blog if you want to look it up, but um, but I thought those would be really cute to embellish those because they're fun to color. They're really they're really just a fun a fun uh, a fun set to color. So I thought those would good, go good on it. I've got gumdrops for Christmas cards. I have some house mouse stamps that you know they're building like a, a gingerbread house. So though I don't make I don't bulk make the house mouse ones because they take a long time to color. But for like mom and my sister, I would totally color those and uh, put gum, these gumdrop brads on and send them to them. 
So, I mean, just for Christmas, you can't do like Copic coloring on like 100 cards. It's just very impractical. So, um, I, I got this. I paid full price for this one too. This is three dollars. And I don't know if you can see on the video camera, but um, these brads have such detail. It's almost like they're lithographed. Uh, gorgeous cardinals. Again, I thought it would be pretty in the peg stamp trees, the trees that I designed for pegstamps.com. Um, so I thought they'd be, they'd be nice on that, especially the Christmas set. And this is the pastel birds. Uh, I don't know if it's the same birds as in the bright birds. They seem to be more like inflate birds, and these tend, seem to be more like perched birds. So, um, I, I like them. I tend to use their. I tend to use those kind of more outliney, modern, solid shapes. I got some um, pearls. These were a dollar a piece. I like these little stick-on like enamel dots and pearls. They're just a little something. I don't like to pay a lot of money for them because I don't think they make a huge impact, but they're a nice accent. So I'll grab them when I see them like in the dollar bin, which is what these were. Um, I, and you know, I use them, so why not? You know, I, they're not the sexiest embellishments out there, but I I use them. Uh, I also got these flamingos. These I believe were a full price purchase, and again, they're lithographed. It seems to be, but that will go good with that rubbernecker stamp set that I just got, and the lot the uh, one from uh, Local King rubber stamps. The the flamingo sets that I got there. These are just maple leaves, which are you know again nice for the peg stamp trees. And, um, you know, from Maine, we have lots of, lots of fall foliage and, uh, I thought that'd be cool. cute. And this one was just kind of silly, but they're cats doing yoga, which I thought was so cute. They're little yoga cats. And maybe that will go nice with that. Um, one from Technique Junkies, a little friendship cats one. I think those would go really cute together. Um, so I think that actually that's about it. Uh, we did, we saw a super dollar tree when we were in West Springfield. And, um, so I'm like, we got to go check it out. It's super. What do they have? Right. About the same as what we have in our dollar tree. I did grab a few sheets of these pearls. I got a, um, a light pink, this light pink. I got a mint kind of blue color and I got a Christmas red. Um, so yeah, that, that's not that exciting, but, um, but there you have it. I mean, I certainly made up like a bandit. Got all kinds of good stuff to play with. And um, you'll be seeing these in upcoming tutorials. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have a particular stamp set or a product you'd like to see me demonstrate first, let me know that in the comments below. And I will try to um, uh, try to work that in. I'll try to kind of go by what's the most popular. So if you want to thumbs up somebody's comment that says, hey, would you use that, you know, Viewmaster Real Live? Had one for years and I've never done anything with it or could you use that goldfish stamp or the glitter embossing powder or whatever just let me know and you can thumbs up if you see somebody else asking you for the same thing that would be uh that would be good too and um and yeah it'll be fun it'll be fun to go through these and give them a try I'm gonna go rest my voice now because I am feeling very hoarse I actually could use a nap because I am seriously sleep deprived after this weekend but uh but I had a ball I love going down there and teaching we taught watercolors and it was so much fun and um if you were in my class please say howdy thanks so much for watching please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this haul video and until next time happy crafting